You know, the 1970s was a weird time for last names. There was a lot of Smiths, uh, two Bob Kellys, a uh, lot of Sutters, a uh, lot of LaPointe's. But did you know there was two Claude La Roses? The most famous one, of course, played with the Montreal Canadiens, had great success. But the second one, probably one of the most underrated players of his generation, who was a number one draft pick in the WHA and eventually became one of the uh, greatest players to make a comeback uh, of his generation. Gave up hockey, but when he came back, he broke the 50 goal mark in the AHL. So we go to, have to be talking about one person, the very underrated and the very unheralded Claude LaRose. Now, Claude LaRose, uh, born in uh, Saint Jean, sur Richelieu, Quebec, beautiful community, uh, uh, was drafted 160, 2020th overall in the 75 in NHL amateur draft. Now, d this was a late pick for the Rangers, and we don't know why he went so late in the draft. He had spent several seasons in the Q League with Drummondville, Sherwinigan, and Sherbrooke, and did nothing but score goals. 73 scored 63 goals in 61 games, 74, 56 goals in 68 games, and then the, the big one between Sherwinigan and Sherbrooke, his hometown, uh, 64 games, 69 goals. All the three seasons, he averaged more than 120 points a year. He won the Selkie Trophy, uh, both gentlemen, in 73 for Drummondville. All-Star second team, 73, 74, and 75, with Drummondville, Schwinnigan, and Sherbrooke. And it was a Memorial Cup All-Star first team in 75 from Sherbrooke. Now, he was uh, well known for being high on the radar of the WHA. 1975 draft, the Cincinnati Stingers took him first overall in that selection because allegedly they were going to look at making a, a French connection line for him and that's, what he, and that's what he did. Now, this is how it worked, ladies and gentlemen. He decided to stay for... Uh, 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 it go directly into the WHA with the Cincinnati Stingers. Now, first season, six, 52 points in 79 games, including 28 goals. Second campaign, 76 points in 81 games, including 30 goals. 78, he split time between Cincinnati and Indianapolis, 25 goals in 79 games. 79, he decided to, after race was forward, to leave for the Rangers, and he played 50 games with their franchise in New Haven at the AHL, uh, 42 games, 25 goals, and 12 points in the playoffs. 1980, saw his first NHL action, four goals and seven assists for 11 points in 25 games. 81, mired in the minors, 30 goals. Uh, 82, played with the Springfield Indians for most of the campaign before being called up for two playoff games for New York. 83 found himself in Europe with the EHC uh, Wetsikon. And 84, he decided to uh, make a comeback, come out of retirement to play for the Sherbrooke Jets, and uh, broke all kind of league records, 120 points in 80 games. 84 with the Sherbrooke Canadians, won a Calder Cup crown, 79 points in 77 games, including uh, 16 points in the playoffs, 86, his last official AHL season, 77 points in 65 games. 10 years later, he decided to make another comeback for the Quebec Senior League with the Windsor, Windsor Papiers, uh, 44 points in 29 games that year, including 95 goals in 97, 98 with Windsor, 49 points in 35 games. Now, final WHA totals, 202 points in 252 games. AHL dynamite numbers, 492 points in 451 games, including 228 goals. Final NHL totals again, that season with the Rangers, four goals, seven assists for 11 points in 25 games. Now, he picked up an assist in his first NHL game, and also, uh, won a bashing awards in the AHL. Calder Cup at Sherbrooke in 85. Points leader, uh, Sherbrooke, 120 and 84. Hunt Trophy for Sportsmanship, Sherbrooke in 84. AHL All-Star First Team, 
Sherbrooke again 84. WHA All Star game in 76 in Cincinnati. He led the AHL uh, uh, in playoffs in 79 and 85. Once with New Haven and then with Sherbrooke in 85. And again, he played on the AHL regular season champion in New Haven. Now, he was the only rookie selected to play in the 76 WHA All-Star game because of his great play with line minutes Pierre Guité and Jacques Locard, their own French connection during the 76 season. Now, he was also on the Indy team that folded on December 15, 78, and was one of Wayne Gretzky's first pro teammates. Again, he left the WHA to join the Rangers organization after Indy had folded. Although uh, 79 was a good campaign, got back to NHL, he did miss part of the season with torn cartilage in his right knee. Now, he did not play during 83, but again, like I said, came out of retirement to play for Sherbrooke, uh, their first AHL team, the Jets, which were terrible. Now, when he came out a second uh, time, to re- out of retirement, he was probably looking at another possibility making in the minor pro, but nobody took a chance on him. I think he would have been perfect for the Montreal Canadiens, but as you know, it was it was a weird time because uh, Sherbrooke uh, had a mixture of Jets and Canadiens prospects in those years, and uh, like LaRose wasn't high on the, the Jets, uh, what I call, future plans. But I still look at that season with the, the Stingers, ladies and gentlemen. 76 points in 81 games. That's when the Stingers were really flying. I think Fedorik was there as well. So a very, very strong, uh, very, very strong season. So uh, Claude LaRose, not the Montreal Canadiens, but the other Claude LaRose, one of the most underrated players of his generation, a pure sniper, and if he had the puck, it was going one place, and I was in the net. And uh, probably like uh, if Montreal Canadiens would have signed him, who knows? Wouldn't you like to see LaRose on the third line with the Montreal teams of the early 80s? Him and Naslin or you know some other young player willing to feed him? Pretty weird. Well, hockey's, hockey's weird where a player like Claude Rose can make it to the NHL despite you know scoring so many goals in minor and the WHA. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye.